Kenobi! <laughs> Welcome back to the Obi-Wan Vidcast. Joe's here now. Just say hello. Hi, I'm Joe. That's Joe. You know him. Uh, we're here to talk about episodes three and four of Kenobi. We're going to get right into it, because now there's three of us. We're going to be picking up our pace a little bit more. So episode three. I'm a big fan of this episode. What about you guys? Pretty solid. It's certainly my favorite episode of the show. Really? Um, okay. I, I think that this is a very uh, good, like example of like using tension in an episode and just like tv in general because there's some really tense like stuff in this and like the way that they just kind of build tension is very solid and very well done um do, do, do you want me to go into specific examples go go nuts man go into it um specifically um well there's two like specific examples but like the the, the they're like the bigger scenes of it is like Obi-Wan and Leia get onto the truck and like they find out oh this guy's got an imperial flag on his truck and then the stormtroopers come that alien's voiced by Zach Braff by the way Zach I just wanted to point nice. that out good old Zach Braff um, and then like Obi-Wan slips up they know what they're doing Leia you called her Leia and the stormtroopers giving him like an odd look and the other one, like the other big scene, it's it's the Vader scene when he comes to the planet. Vader and is it, done so well in this episode. I was really impressed with how perfectly he was used. Honestly, yeah. Per per personally, I really love how uh, Disney has just turned Darth Vader into a horror villain. I think that that's that's the transformation he needed. Because like in the original trilogy, he's an imposing presence, and uh, in the Disney stuff with Vader, they show you why. <laughs> they show you why everyone is terrified of this guy. He just snaps a kid's neck with the Force. That was insane. For literally no reason, by the way. That, that, that's because he came out scared. to check on his father Fuck who them just kids, died. Darth Vader. Yeah. <laughs> he has a history, to be fair. This, is a, this is a repeated pattern. So we're going to do Yeah, I mean, like we like we were saying, I think it's a solid episode. Might be my favorite of the show so far. Um, another thing that Joe had alluded to, I do love that uh, this show has uh, made Trumpers canon in the Star Wars universe. Uh, like, yeah, the 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 Imperial um, apologist with the Empire the Empire flag on his truck, like that's such a real thing. Especially when for like people like us who live in Missouri and sometimes go to Middle Missouri, I've I've, I've been to Trumpville a couple times and ugh. yeah, I love Vader in this. I like the introduction of this underground railroad thing, the path. It makes perfect sense that this was exist, and I think it ties into Rebels really well because what Rebels showed is that there was a bunch of independent Rebel cells that then become united into the Rebel Alliance. You know. This is just sort of another one of those cells. You, you know what I'm saying, Tim? Uh, I'm a big, big fan of what they did in this episode. Now, I have a take here. It's okay. when we'll talk about episode four. But this is not my favorite episode of the show so far. But it is really good. I love Vader in this episode. They teased him at the end of two and... Whoo, baby! Joe, baby. I, I want you to understand. What you're talking about Vader with right now, that's how most people feel watching Rogue One. I hope, it, I hope this contextualizes it for you now. <laughs> Um, no, it, it never will. Well, I mean, I understand why people like it. I don't like it. For I know, I'm just saying, I'm, now you know how they feel. I, I know how they feel, because they actually, <laughs> in my opinion, they did it right. Yeah, they did it way better, and I think it shows, because every time it's not a full body shot or one of the duels, it's hated in the costume. Yes. And you can feel the presence. Now, what do you think about the AI voice? Uh, well, I mean, at least they didn't put a uh, 91-year-old James Earl Jones in a voice booth again, but I don't like that precedent. I really I don't like that think precedent. You're, I think he is in the booth, though, because they need a base to feed off of. Uh, I, I I mean, at least it sounds good. I just think it's a scary precedent. It sounds oh, yeah, better than sure. Luke's. It sounds better than Luke's, and you know what? It sounds better than 91-year-old James Earl Jones. But I so. am afraid of the precedent it sets. I pretty much you? agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think AI voice as a concept is just weird. Uh, like, uh, my brother recently shared this post about, uh, wouldn't it be cool if they did a show 
where um, uh, Billy D. Williams played old Lando Calrissian, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's sell- telling stories, and then it would cut to footage of uh, Donald Glover, and it, they'd be like, "No, you're misremembering that." Like that would be a really cool idea, but no, Disney learned the wrong fucking lesson from Solo. Except, yes. except Donald Glover is supposed to be the star of the Lando show they're making, mm-hmm. so I don't get it. I don't get this whole recasting thing. Not to mention Ewan McGregor is a yeah. recast. But I digress. I digress. I digress. <laughs> um, something I want to point out in the show is Reva. Reva in this episode, and especially next episode. Vader is the focus villain-wise in this third episode, but Reva definitely mm. has her moments. Like when she encounters Leia at the end. Um, I think that's a really chilling moment, especially when the camera, dis- the camera kind of goes back and you reveal... That she killed the person that yeah. Leia was supposed to meet. That's a really well done moment, I thought. Yeah, I think yeah. the episode like really makes her feel very predatory. And uh, I think it makes her yeah definitely a more... As we see more and more of her, we see how dangerous of a villain she is. Um, yeah. I think that's I, I pretty much all I have to say of episode 3. I basically agree with everything you guys have said. Is there anything else we should bring up or should we move on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean... On. I guess uh, I'll I'll talk a briefly about just like the the fight between Vader and Obi Wan, which yeah. Oh yeah, yeah we just which, didn't talk about yeah, that. I, Thank you. <laughs> I, I think that that's probably about as well as they could handle that, just because like I think we shouldn't have too much of that because like that fight in um, the original film, like that's very much a. Uh, it's been several years since I've seen you, and now we're gonna fight to the death moment. Um, and I think the the less we see of them together, the more tension there is building up to that final battle. Um, but I think this was, like, a good, uh, hey, motherfucker, you thought I died. Fire! Also, Obi-Wan, you're an old hermit bitch. Yeah, just the way he raked him in the coals, literally. I was like, damn! Vader is... Yeah. Pissed. Disney went there. I'll have some things to say about what you just said, Tim, but it requires episode four as context. So let's move on to episode four, a.k.a. the episode that made Reva one of my new favorite Star Wars characters. God. I think this is Reva's episode through and through. Mm-hmm. 100%, yes. And wow, is she a great villain or what? She will do anything to get what she wants and that like she goes to the extent of about to fucking like torture tor- a child elec- electro torture a child like that's how far this woman is willing to go like holy shit I-, I also love how in her initial interrogation scene with Leia she's just explicitly using tactics cops use lying to the suspect trying to be the suspect's friend I was going to say, there's like a good cop, bad cop kind of like mentality. Or reports. the classic thing where it's like, the only person who can save you is you. That is such a fucking cop thing. So the Empire yeah. of Cops confirmed. I mean, that was pretty, <laughs> yeah. uh, that was a given. They're yeah, fascists. I also love uh, Ice Cube's son is in this episode. He has like three scenes, but he's here and that's great. It's like Ice yeah. Cube in Star Wars, basically, which is fun. Good old O'Shea Jackson Jr. And I love this little, I love the path network thing. I really like that. I like Obi-Wan sneaking into the Inquisitor's headquarters on Mustafar. Yep. I love how you find the tombs of Jedis and God. they're frozen in sap like mosquitoes in Jurassic Park. I, I was thinking Jurassic Park too <laughs> when I saw that. I was. Th- I literally I, said to my dad, Welcome to Jurassic Park. I, I, I was thinking that, but I was also thinking of Blade Trinity when he finds, like, the blood <laughs> farm of, like, people just, like, wrapped in bags just being, like, harvested for their blood. Um, I also love how one of the Jedi encased in the tombs was from the video game Jedi Fallen Order. I love Obi-Wan using the Force more in the episode. I love the thing where he Doctor Stranges in Endgames, the water trying to rush in. That was a good shot. Just, like, him forcing the glass... And then, when they get out. That was so cool. And I love the escape, when they finally escape. And then the, I think those were A-Wings, came in and started effing the place up. And they lost someone. And that was really sad. And then when Vader comes in, 
God. Who loved when Vader came in at the end? Um, chokes Reva, and Reva's like, I let them get away. And Vader's like, damn, bitch, you smart. Well, shit, that, you should have just <laughs> yes. said that. In, in, in the VV-8 yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, I thought that that was an interesting, like, little reveal at the very end, that last shot. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, in regards to, like, the escape, uh, they, they had a pilot named Sully, and so I am very on, I'm very on board with this episode, because Sully's are known for being pilots, and that's why I go by Sullivan, because I'm not a pilot. Um, but I respect the Sully's that fly. Uh, Joe, you have anything to say about this one? Um, we, we kind of covered all of, uh, what I had to say, and I chimed in about Reva. Uh, the one thing that I was laughing about, um, because I was just remembering, uh, Obi-Wan's tactic to sneak Leia out of the hangar. <laughs> He's just walking oh, around. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah! Like, How that, is this working? That bit was so good. <laughs> just, just the tiny little toddler I, like, feet. <laughs> I will say, though, I realized something. They put a tracking device on the ship they got away in. Right, the Lola thing. So that right. means Obi-Wan... It's probably going to get Leia home, but then something's going to force him to go back to Mustafar, where Vader's castle is, right? That's on Mustafar, where Vader is. Obi-Wan will have to go back to Mustafar. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I think it's very clear what the show is building up to at this point. Obi-Wan, Vader, Mustafar, rematch. I think if they handle it well... Which is, this is still eight years before A New Hope, so the thing you're talking about, Tim, if it's just that one last duel on Mustafar, I think episode four will still work. Mm. Uh, I guess it would depend on how they handle it. I think it could be interesting to see. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm down for cool lightsaber fights, but... It could be that Obi-Wan still schools him again, so the whole, yeah. I was but the learner, but now I am the master thing could still apply. The best way to end that would be, like, sort of a stalemate. Um, Obi-Wan wins round one. It's a stalemate round two. And then yeah. Vader wins round three. That could work. Problem Joe, solved. what about you? Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm i I'm with Tim on this. I, I, I think uh, they, they just have to handle it properly um, in order for it to work. Um, yeah, I think it could work if done well. I think it'd be very fitting for the rematch to be on Mustafar. Um, and I think it'd be really cool if that's what it is. I think that's what episode six is going to be. Do you guys have any predictions you want to get out? or uh, Not yeah, that I, I can think of. I don't really have any predictions. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm... I, I, I still... Yeah, like, I'm, I'm appreciating the show for kind of what it is. Um, I still just kind of like... I could have been fine without this, but like, I'm, I'm having fun with it still. Um, so I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see where they go with the last couple episodes. Episode 4 obviously works without this, but it's a fun addition, and it kind of helps contextualize some stuff. You know what else kind of contextualizes stuff, though, guys? My cat. You! The person watching this vidcast. Thank you oh so very much for watching. If you're here, come below let me know. What do you think of episode 3 and 4 of Obi-Wan? Do you think it's building up to a rematch on Mustafar? Do you like Reva? Is she one of your new favorite Star Wars characters? Comment below and let me know. While you're down there, hit the like button so we know how much you like us. Hit the subscribe button so we know how much you love us. And hit the bell icon so I can Obi-Wan Kenobi into your home. Thank you again also very much for watching. Tune in a couple weeks when we talk about episodes 5 and 6. It'll be a lot of fun. See you then. Bye. Farewell. Live long and prosper. Shut the fuck up. <laughs>